the universal human rights framework requires that the governments take measures to implement the the whole range of national plans, national policies and programs that ensure the enjoyment of human rights of all people, of all human rights. Nebe oteng ser halu tuir buat nebe hau kolia, oteng ser halu tuir buat nebe hau liha kara. Dalam barak kami nebe saya vitim, kami so so perbam dia kabe manusia nebe halu nebe hau tuir melayan nebe orang. In Timor Leste, that's more power give to the men rather than a woman. Masculine mainstream men to dominate your life. How we work together with our stakeholders. Prioritary principle new nebe mag affect ba affect Timor Leste, sector Saudi Nia, namo siya sector edukasyon, namo sa parte ira itahari ng Timor Leste namo sa infrastruktura nebe mag sidao. Iha area Saudi itahari kata. Itu hari realiti di fasilitas khusus Saudi ini yang dihusi infrastruktur, dihusi puskesmas, klinik, nomos, rekurs human sedap, nomos atau fasilitas sedap pelihatan bagi fiton ini yang necessary seluruh. Allocation budget for the increase in education level of the women is still also not clear in this moment. Wahai rasa rasa supaya hidup kesal minimal ia primari sekolah primari di o sekund pre sekundaria ni husi dana dalam barak peti sera hili disizang atau para tambah lagi hitam supporta husi familia o inan ama. Girls enrollment in the school is lower compared to boys. Without a good education, it will be very difficult to reach a gender balance. The economy is very good. The majority of the Timor Leste are not an analphabetism, no more than the service of the agriculture. Women's Participation in econ economy is still very low. Most women are working in the uh, informal sector. And also dependency in economy, family economy, uh, women for the men uh, in the family. Dalam barat timo, peto timo leh susu preba. Kami ni kabe mana rasa ko lupa ni besi rukulia. Mami kami kata kami atuh labeh rukulia, labeh hal buat dia suru sirat tambah. All that is not addressing the budget and the contribution, the real contribution of women in terms of economic development and unpaid work is not really considered. Gender-responsive budgeting is simply about good budgeting. It is a tool for gender mainstreaming and a tool for accountability for both government and for the rights holders. It's a tool that uh, the citizen can use to hold the government accountable for them. The UN Women plays the role of promoting a GRB as a tool that can be used by the government uh, the, as a, a policy makers and the planner to allocate their resources in order to respond to the needs, the different needs of uh, women and men, boys and girls in the country. 
uh, Secretary of State also is focused on the build the capacity uh, in the Minister and Secretary of State as well in district level. Working very closely with the UN Women and CEPI, we are now focusing on how to make more people understand of the situation. Also, uh, support women's NGOs. They are the, the, the local NGO to lead the uh, NGO's perspective to integrate gender responsive budgeting annually. Like the recursos humanos, we have a conocimiento of the data when we talk about sensitive gender or sensitivity to the state of the How people will think about the big issues like a micro microeconomic issue, not about organization and women only, but it's, it is about how you can understand about the macroeconomic policy will affect on women's life in the rural area. Uh, they have a, a critical uh, role to play as an NGO to analyze a budget, a state budget annually. E segundo, Kata, a uh, dificuldades ba ami ato acceso documentos uh, orçamento governo nia. We would like them to uh, more active because not just waiting for the government. A uh, maioria a uh, povo Timor Leste, no mosi komunidade, sira ki konhesimento kona ba sanya mo orçamento sensível de gênero. A ah, papel a uh, Universidade Nacional de Timor Leste sanya uh, papel ma uh, we have a initiative for the government to do it. We have a political and government to do it. We have a government to do it. We have a student who has comprehended the equality of gender. We have a lot of people who have the equality of gender. We found a really uh, low uh, knowledge on gender issues in general. So we have been doing lots of work uh, in providing training uh, to the government officials. And increase awareness and also strength capacity to do a gender analysis in the budget of specific ministry and then in the state budget hopefully. If they don't understand, they don't care about the gender responsive budget. We believe that we need to increase their capacity and then awareness on the importance of GRB. Now we are struggling to make sure that the, every institution in Timor Leste will adopt this, uh, this mechanism for the budget. Without that, it will be very difficult uh, to implement a, a gender responsive budget. We have done some good practices, like some ministers have allocated the good budget, but still low. We need to improve the capacity. We are now uh, still uh, weak in the uh, policy development. Not clear monitoring and evaluation framework to uh, measure how gender responsive budgeting will be implemented. The government has already promised that they would like to see women live in the dignity, they have good health, good education. So we need to look at the budget and then ask ourselves how gender responsive it is as a whole. How will the state to implement the law to promote the equality of gender and access to the sector? I will tell to the women of Timor Leste that your active participation is very important to improve your life and to achieve gender equality. When you want to implement the gender responsive budget in, in your life, you should be understanding about the policy decision making on also. 
Bafi Tomalok Sireha Timor Leste, Penuai Hira Parlamento Nasional Halo Debati Borsamento Istadu Ninyang, Persisa Ita Foy Tani Oportunidadi, Hodi Akumpanya Ba Debati Orsamento Ne, Atu Ita Hatene Kata Orsamento Ne, Bele Hatan Ba Itene Nesisidari. If you want to see development, progress, and gender equality in Timor Leste, it is very important for you to use gender responsive budgeting. We have to convince more people to understand this issue better. We have seen the service of the government in the The discrimination against women is so deeply embedded in all our society that it becomes invisible. Women, we have always been taught that we are natural followers. Uh, women always uh, do most of the domestic jobs. We're such a patriarchal society, and we're such a sexy society. Uh, women have been taught to be subservient to men. There is no gender budget unless there's a gender plan. Well, in the Philippines, three out of ten women are poor. Are there more women like me who are dying when giving birth? Every day, 11 women die due to pregnancy-related complications or the lack of reproductive health services. Are there enough opportunities for women to make money on their own outside of their husband's sources of income? They have less access to the land. They do not have control over it. They do not have benefit from the fruits of their labor. The main inequalities of women that women in the Philippines face now are roughly three on the top of my head. Um, one is political participation, two is economic marginalization, and three, traditional gender notions of what women's place and women's roles are. Uh, women are generally left behind in terms of participation, effective participation. So we need to uh, bring that up in the planning process. Uh, sometimes people don't pay attention to women because they don't speak. But to make them speak, you need a lot of training and consciousness raising. And that is where the budget really comes in. Uh, they supposedly have the budget in place, but the question is usage. How it was used and where it was used is something that governments also st still need to look, to look into. Gender responsive budgeting or GRB is essentially good budgeting. Why is it good budgeting? Because it, it addresses the needs of both men and women, boys and girls. It's really being able to put in the finances needed to account for women's human rights. It recognizes fundamentally the difference of situation of women. It also wants to contribute to the achievement of gender equality outcomes and women's, uh, women's empowerment goals. The Gender Responsive Budget Bill has made significant impact on the lives of Filipino women. Has brought about changes in the lives of people, women and men, in different contexts.
women have been able to pro- have been provided with that space to participate in the local development planning to, to have their voices here to participate in the decision making. The participation of women is good for the whole society. Women become more stronger because of this. This is our instrument to lobby for the government. It is logical that we must encourage their poor participation so that they can contribute. I think uh, it's very important uh, it's, uh, uh, for the women to be given the chance to prove that uh, they are also capable leaders and, and by uh, providing them with the opportunity of uh, becoming leaders. Little by little, uh, we're increasing women's participation. It's very good. What we used to say, the needs, but you can also say the rights. Not only women, because uh, gender and development is not only for women, but is for men and women. It's a long-term goal. We cannot just start and stop. It just means it must be sustained. Duty bearers have a very important role to make sure that resources are allocated in such a way that gender equality is actually achieved. What I needed government to understand first before they went into an implementation of gender-responsive budgeting is to really be able to understand what gender issues are to begin with. Only then can any financial plan be effective. Implementers of this policy should be well aware on how to do gender analysis of what are the issues happening in the sectors that they are targeting or servicing for them to be able to identify the appropriate programs and only then can they decide on what resources should be allocated. It's important for us to have a policy for gender budgeting because unless we have that, we don't have the necessary financial support for all the things that the different departments of the president can do. For people in government, who believe in gender mainstreaming is to ensure that we see through the process. If you come from civil society organizations, it's making sure that government does it. The duty bearers are there to protect the rights of the claim holders. The claim holders also have the responsibility to claim their rights and to support the duty bearers in, in making sure that rights are protected and respected. Gender responsibility are very political processes. Because of that, civil society is an important actor or an important player in getting gender development in the agenda of the state. Women's movements in the Philippines play the big role in making sure that the gender and development budget initiative is institutionalized and it's not just a political discretion of implementers. There is no development for any society unless there's gender equality. We already know that. We have already long accepted that. If the duty bearer, the government as a duty bearer, responds, address these issues, then women will have a fuller life. The government cannot do this alone, nor civil society can do this alone. We can only do this together. Women's movement should be ever vigilant to make sure that uh, promises are kept. The government should have uh, should build the capacity to do it right. You need to make women conscious of their human rights. It's not enough that they know human rights, but development is also organizing women. A woman and the world shall be uh, more vigilant to assert their rights, to gather, and to take action collectively. Don't be afraid to give equal opportunity to women because they are partners in building this nation. Gender equality is a necessary ingredient for development. Now we have to match that political commitment Rural women contribute to development. Development should contribute to rural women. You cannot miss anybody because development is for all.
men, women, rich or poor, whatever. In order to comply with their human rights obligations uh, under civil convention, they must integrate gender perspective in the old budgetary process. Dana-dana untuk yang untuk rakyat ini bisa tahu sebelumnya kan nggak pernah telah mengikuti itu kami mengetahui. All the priority is chosen by the men. Tadinya sama sekali nol ibu tapi alhamdulillah ini luar biasa nih keberhasilan ibu ini setelah adanya ide yang masuk di. What's the problem? What is the connection between the gender and budgeting? There are so many challenges that we have to support the women groups. Uh, men and women has uh, different needs and priorities. According to these priorities, I think it is wise for the government to address, to address these differences. We are facing the problem in women and education. And then also in health. Also in the workforce, and the last one, but not the least, uh, we have also the problem in women participation in decision making, in public policy making. Lack of skill, information, lack of education as well. So they are less confidence to participate in the budgeting processes. Neglecting the needs of the part of one part of population means that neglecting the whole population. We don't want that to happen. We want a uh, development result to be uh, benefited all women and men. That's why GRB is very important. Some say that when we're talking about the budgeting, they thinking about the numbers, the documents, something like that. So when we're talking about integrating or mainstreaming gender into uh, government budgeting, we call it as a gender responsive budgeting, they say that, oh sorry, uh, I don't have uh, skill, technicalities, uh, information. responsif gender adalah anggaran yang harus dialokasikan oleh pemerintah daerah di mana mengakomodir partisipasi kepentingan aspirasi kebutuhan perempuan maupun laki-laki secara adil ya itu pengertian yang kita tahu semuanya every human have unique or different needs and the budgeting should consider that men and women should involve to make sure that all uh, citizens can speak up for their needs regarding the budget. There are three factors involved. Government, civil society, and private sector. You have not only to include the government, but also to include the civil society. UN Women helps government to be accountable for, for what they're budgeted for, to be accountable also for their commitment to gender equality. And we also help and support the civil society organization, the women's group, the academias, to give inputs to the government. We must know about the politics and then the technical thing and also how to deal with the culture. 
So, what I mean is that these three things will be the barrier if if the woman cannot was that deal with the three of them. We need to look at these differences in our planning. Uh, for that matter, in the budgeting as well. Ya tentu manfaat pembangunan tidak akan dirasakan secara adil ya oleh perempuan ketika expenditure itu uh, netral netral gender ya. It is important also that the GRB is an ongoing process of check and balances between government as a duty bearers and women as a right holders or in this in this regard as citizens. Then participation of a women then ensures that governments are accountable for their commitment. And also government are being uh, supported because they're trying to really make their commitment works. To convince the benefit of practicing or implementing gender responsive budgeting on increasing the quality of life of everyone. Memerlukan waktu yang cukup lama untuk memberikan pemahaman yang benar terkait dengan uh, gender budget responsive itu. It is not a hard science. It, it can be learned. It can be built. The most important thing is to ask the, the right question: whether or not women achieving what they're supposed to achieve. The rights of men and women is already guaranteed in the constitution, you know, and also Indonesia is already committed to the international commitment like SIDO, Beijing Platform, MDGs. So if you use this gender better thing, this is also one way to achieve that commitment, how to ensure gender equality and women's empowerment. When they understand that there is the differences of the needs and the priorities that's faced by the men and women, then they have to do the action. Setelah metani masalah kan ada kekurangan-kekurangan apa di dusun kami itu kan satu permasalahannya ada air bersih terutama air bersih itu kan yang menjadi kendala kelompok kami warga kami lalu untuk pendidikan dan juga kesehatan itu kami mengikuti selalu diundang untuk mudus dan mudes dan musrenbang itu kami selalu mengusulkan yang paling utama itu air bersih. Keuntungan kami adalah bisa menikmati yaitu dari program pemerintah lewat di bibit tersebut sepertinya itu air minum. E, dulunya masyarakat sini maksudnya tertinggal, sekarang sudah terangkat, maksudnya dulu cari air aja susah, terus sekarang jadi gampang. Ke kaum perempuan dulu e, maksudnya e, sulit cari air, padahal dari pagi udah cari air, nanti siangnya masak, nanti sorenya cari rumput, sorenya lagi mandi ke sungai cari air lagi terus sekarang Alhamdulillah karena masyarakat sini terut makam ibu-ibu udah ikut pers ke audensi ke Dewan sekarang jadi sukses gitu maksudnya air bersih gitu. When we can develop the better and the stronger people participation in the budget budgeting process we will get the better transparency and accountability and finally we can achieve the better human rights fulfillment for the people. Perunya itu ibu-ibu diajak bicara tentang musrenbang baik tingkat dusun, desa maupun kecamatan bahkan kabupaten sehingga aspirasi ibu itu bisa terserap oleh pemerintah. Ya dirasakan lebih baik sekarang kalau dulunya itu air kan nggak lancar kalau sekarang sudah agak lancar dan juga kesehatan itu dulunya warga itu kebanyakan belum punya itu jam kesmas atau jam pestai pokoknya jaminan kesehatan gitu sekarang kan warga semua sudah memiliki they have to speak so then the uh, the audiences or the government will know what exactly the needs, what exactly the priorities. Ayo karum perempuan, kita harus berani maju uh, untuk menyampaikan masalah-masalah ke Dewan supaya masalah-masalah kita didengar 
oleh pemerintah dan dikabulkan apa yang kita inginkan. At the end, we will get the bigger benefit for all of us. Ayo kita ikuti Musrenbang untuk membangun daerah kita masing-masing. Gitu.